there. Have you heard of the Bugaloose? It's a cool TV show from the 1970s about some funky creatures living in a big jukebox having fun adventures. Stick around because we've got some interesting facts about the show coming up. Who was your favorite classic Hollywood actor in this series? Let us know. And has the Bugaloose ever made an impact on your life? Share your stories with us. Lastly, tell us about your favorite memory or personal experience with this show. We want to hear from you. Keep watching for more info, and remember your stories are important. Let's talk Bugaloo's Memories. A beloved TV series premiered in 1970 called The Bugaloose. It captured hearts with its whimsical storyline and endearing characters. Set in Tranquility Forest, the show follows the adventures of four insect-like creatures joy, IQ, courage, and harmony. They live in a giant jukebox hidden deep within the forest and aspire to share their music with the world. However, their peaceful existence is constantly threatened by the scheming duo of Benita Bazaar and her henchman Fred, who seek to exploit their talents for their own gain. Despite facing many obstacles, they remain determined to pursue their dreams and spread joy through their music. Along the way, they meet various fantastical creatures and go on exciting adventures while staying true to their friendship and camaraderie. Throughout its run, the show received acclaim for its imaginative storytelling and catchy musical numbers. Its visuals and characters endeared it to audiences of all ages, earning it a special place in many hearts. Though it aired for only one season, it continues to be fondly remembered as a classic children's television series that embodies the spirit of creativity and friendship. Martha Ray, known for her divorce from Captain Neil Lang in Mexico in 1944, played a significant role in the 1970 TV series The Bugaloose. The creator, Sid Croft, drew inspiration from his childhood experiences in the circus and his desire to connect with nature, leading to the setting of the show in Tranquility Forest. Ray's career was documented in The Slapstick Queens by James Robert Parrish, published in 1973. The Bugaloose was a unique production that combined whimsical storytelling with a touch of nostalgia, making it a memorable part of television history. The TV series The Bugaloose, loved by many in the 1970s, holds a special spot in people's hearts. Its whimsical characters and catchy tunes enchanted audiences of all ages. Among these characters was Sparky the Firefly, voiced by Walker Edmiston at times. Interestingly, the creators had the title in mind long before making the show. It's fascinating how inspiration can strike unexpectedly. For example, in the film Puffin Stuff, Wichipu once posed as Betsy Boogaloo, which later inspired the show's name. Regarding the show's journey, it's worth mentioning Martha Ray, who received the Jean Hersholt Humanitarian Award in 1969. Her dedication to charity work and entertaining troops truly embodied the spirit of giving. Interestingly, her estate later gave this prestigious award to the Friars Club in 1997, making her the club's first female honorary member. Martha Ray's actions continue to inspire, showing the significant influence one person can have on the world. In summary, the Bugaloose not only entertained audiences with its imaginative storytelling, but also inspired and recognized individuals like Martha Ray. It shows how creativity and kindness can leave a lasting impact. This reflection on the show's history and its connection to real-world events highlights its significance. Indeed, The Bugaloose remains a timeless classic loved by generations. The Bugaloose is a TV series from 1970 that holds some interesting behind-the-scenes details. Ray, who once owned the Five O'Clock Club in Miami, Florida, was part of the production. During flying sequences, the male actors wore standard harnesses hidden under their pants, but a unique setup was needed for Joy, played by Caroline Ellis, due to her skirt. She had to learn to balance on a swing-like flying rig. In a surprising turn of events, in 1990, producer writer William Winkler sued Billy Barty in small claims court in Van Nuys, California, over unpaid money related to another series called Short Ribs from 1989. Winkler emerged victorious, sparking widespread media coverage across the country and internationally. The story made headlines in numerous newspapers, radio news shows, and television news stations. Even Entertainment Tonight covered the saga. Vardy himself described it as the most negative publicity he ever faced, with headlines like Small Billy Barty in Small Claims and Barty Comes Up Short in Small Claims. These insights offer a glimpse into the lesser-known aspects of the Bugaloose and the legal battles involving key figures behind the scenes. 
The Bug A Loose, a TV series from 1970, featured Billy Barty, who had honed his drumming skills in the 1930s for a vaudeville act with his sisters. His talent on the drums was prominently showcased in the show. In 1999, Sid and Marty Croft, creators of The Bug A Loose, worked on a feature film starring the boy band Hanson. However, the project encountered obstacles and didn't progress beyond the development stage. The Croft brothers meticulously auditioned British youngsters for the titular roles, seeking solid musical abilities. They even sought advice from playwright Lionel Bart. However, they overlooked the importance of acting skills until filming began. The Bug Loose was a 1970 TV series that faced budget constraints, leading to unrealized plans for various towns and villains. The Super Square, inhabited by square-shaped people in square houses, remained bland. Downtown, intended as a creepy lair, never materialized, along with its militant ruler Big Bummer and his general bumblers. The Vermilion villains and puppeteer Uncle Emil posed as adversaries. Martha Ray, known for her role in Puffin Stuff, played Boss Witch despite concerns about her strong personality. Behind Bonita Bazaar's jukebox lay the USS Enterprise bridge set from Star Trek, where the cast relaxed. The Bug a Loose, a 1970 TV series, had notable encounters with other TV personalities. Lucille Ball, shooting Here's Lucy nearby, frequented the set and admired their wings, according to John McIndoe. Ball, known for her variety show and personal struggles, attempted suicide in 1956. After recovery, she wore tokens from well-wishers and acknowledged the Sisters of St. Francis Hospital, where she recuperated. Another figure, Billy Barty, hosted Billy Barty's Big Top in the early to mid-1960s, entertaining viewers between reruns of The Three Stooges. His show aired on KTTV CH11 in Hollywood, California. These connections added depth to the bug a loose behind the scenes world. The Bug a Loose, a 1970 TV series, faced commercial challenges despite being signed to Capitol Records. Their album and the single for a friend failed to garner success, leading to their removal from Capitol's artist roster in 1971. Martha Ray initially rejected the role of Benita Bazaar on the children's show, fearing it would harm her career. However, her friend and creator, Sid Croft, eventually persuaded her to take on the role. In the casting process for the character IQ, on the bug a loose Phil Collins emerged as one of the final three contenders. However, the role eventually went to someone else. These behind-the-scenes snippets shed light on the challenges faced by the bug a loose both in the music industry and during the casting process. The series, though not widely successful, remains notable for its unique characters and the interesting stories surrounding its creation. The bug a loose was the second series by Sid Croft and Marty Croft, following H.R. Puffinstuff. Unlike the former shot on film, the bug a loose utilized videotape to reduce costs and embrace chroma key visual effects. Creator Sid Croft frequented a Miami drag club with star Martha Ray, where they admired a performer named Bibi Bazaar. To persuade Ray to join the show, Croft named her character Benita Bazaar. In a 1997 Animaniacs comic spoof titled The Warner Bugs, characters Yakko, Wacko, and Dot morph into flying insects in a nod to the bug-a-loose, poking fun at its songs and Martha Ray's role.